بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليكم to you dear viewers dear Muslim brothers and sisters all around the globe welcome to another episode of the birth of love well here you are watching us with me Jawad Ferdowsi and our dear honorable guest Sheikh Daudi Sheikh Daudi welcome to your program السلام عليكم ورحمة الله and Alhamdulillah that we have got another opportunity to continue our discussion around Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, the birth of love. Well, um, <clears throat> in these sessions, we want to depict uh, different aspects of the life of Imam al Hussein about uh, the traditions from other Imams, from different narrations describing Imam al Hussein, his characteristics about the things that we should be reminded of. We know as, as the Shia, as the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt, we have heard so many stories, so many events, so many sacrifices of Imam al Hussein and his holy companions. For this session, I believe uh, we want to talk about the narrations and the traditions from the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, As-Salamu alayka ya Abu Abdullah wa ala al-arwah al-lati hallad bifinaik alayka minni salamullahi abadan ma baqeed wa baqiya al-layl wa al-nahar You see my brother, the, we said that Imam al-Hussain alayhi salam is uh, so gracious some people do not know him yet if you want to uh, know Imam al Hussein and to follow the way of Imam al Hussein salam, at the beginning we have to get more familiar with him. How we can get familiar with him? Different ways, okay, we have. For example, first of all, to study about the life of Imam al Hussein, salam, his own thought or something like this. Sometimes we can refer to the people who knew Imam al Hussein. Salam. They describe him and after that through them, through the words that they are telling about Imam al Hussain salam, maybe we know Imam al Hussain salam better. But who is better than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself? So we refer to Rasulullah at the beginning, how he described Imam al Hussain salam, how he explained different ahadiths and traditions from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he narrated he said that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was like this, was like that. So I think it is the best way. I try to say different ahadiths that both Shia and Sunni believe. They accept them. They do not reject them. They, they say that, yes, Rasulullah said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, narrated this one himself. So because of that, I think one of the best ways is to refer to Rasulullah himself. So we see that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was living with Rasulullah at least for six or seven years because it was the ten years, uh, the tenth year of Hijra that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left the world. He went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was the demise of Rasulullah at the tenth year of Hijra. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was born at the fourth year. About six or nearly seven years he was living with Rasulullah. Under the direct education. Exactly the under the direct education of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he received Islam from not only the words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not only from the things that he said and explained, but from the action of Rasulullah. He was seeing how Rasulullah was saying prayer. Can we see that Imam al Hussein salam was saying prayer different ways of Rasulullah? If we see that, for example, just I want to give an example. If, if the followers of Imam al Hussein salam are, you know, saying prayer in a different ways, can we say that Imam al Hussein, okay, is saying prayer different ways from Rasulullah? No, no, exactly. He was living with him. He was the grandson of Rasulullah. He was, you know, he grew up 
in the bosom of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself. All the time he was seeing Rasulullah. The Holy Prophet took the hand of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and Imam al Hassan and took them to the mosque. They were say, seeing exactly, watching with their own eyes that how Rasulullah is saying prayer. So we cannot say that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was saying prayer in a different way, Rasulullah was in another way. So the followers of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, okay, can receive a better. Uh, actions of Rasulullah because he was living with him. He was actually, we can say, he was actually studying in the best university in the world. In the world. The university of the Prophet himself. Himself. And uh, <clears throat> is there any greater place for someone to, to be educated than the house of the Prophet? I don't know of why is not. it, but uh, also we know that uh, there were some accusations against the Prophet of Islam himself. You know, when he wanted to make a will, they didn't allow it, mm -hmm. even to the Prophet of Islam. And we can say that after that, it continued. Oh. It continued for the commander of the faithful, for Imam al Hussein. Unfortunately, unfortunately, they have changed the way of Rasulullah. You see that when Imam al Hussein salam started his own movement, he said that, I want nothing except to invite you again to the way of Rasulullah. Anni uridu al-islah fi ummat jaddi. What what is the kind of reform that Imam al hussein alayhi salam wanted to make in the nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? See that he said that I see that Rasulullah was you know acting in a different way and you have changed the way. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam wanted to invite them back to the way of Rasulullah. The sunnah of Rasulullah is in the hands of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He was living with him, not only just saying five, ten, one hundred revaya from Rasulullah. No, no, no. He was living with him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to put Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on his chest, playing with him. So, as you mentioned, my brother, it was the best university in the world. Nobody can claim that I have learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than the uh, Ahlul Bayt. We know that it wasn't for Imam al Hussein, Islam would have been derailed from its main path, and it was for all the sacrifices that he did throughout his holy life, so that changed the way back to the way of Prophet. When people, when the enemy on the enemy side and those people who thought that they are following the Prophet but in a wrong way they were, uh, you know, fooling themselves and other people into coming to a way that was completely different from the religion of Islam. But what is it that there were so many, so many enemies for Imam al Hussein? Unfortunately. For what reason? they were so against Imam al-Hussein. They were not ready to accept the truth. They fought with him. They confronted him. They did whatever they could to Imam al-Hussein and his holy companion, also to the Prophet of Islam, also to the commander of the faithful. It is, uh, unfortunately, it is because of different reasons. I think the most important ones uh, I refer you to one hadith from Imam Sadr alayhi salam. They ask him the same question. He explained that unfortunately because of the worldly desires. Yeah, worldly desires. Worldly. They said that, okay, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought a new territory. He was the commander or something like this. And after that, it's better for us to be the commander, the caliph, or... They wanted to be in the circle of power. Yeah. So because of that, they started to change the way. They said that, who said Imam al Hussein alayhi salam be the leader of the ummah? We, we have to be. They changed the way because of that one, worldly desires, because of themselves, not because of Islam. I think that when they refer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was sick in bed, okay, he told them to bring me a piece of, you know, paper and just 
something I want to write something for you I want to show you the way they said that he is sick he, he doesn't know unfortunately I seek refuge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they said that Rasulullah doesn't know what is he saying because he is sick who said that Rasulullah is receiving revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's talking to the angel of Allah he doesn't know what is he saying you know, I, I believe on the surface, they wanted to show other people that they are with the Prophet of Islam. But deep down inside, God forbid, some of the times we see that people have this attitude. On the surface, they look good. On the surface, they are the believers. On the surface, they are following the Ahl al-Bayt. Mm. But in their actions, deep down in their heart, we can see that they are following the Satan. Mm. Not the Ahl al-Bayt. Yeah. And uh, one of the greatest problems that we see that unfortunately some of the Shia and some of the Muslims are confronting nowadays. And uh, they are really boggled, they are uh, baffled that why is it that we have so many difficulties, so many problems, social problems, problems among the family members, problems between the friends and relatives. I believe one of the reasons must be that we are very good at the surface, but are we really to that extent good in inside? When we want to act something, when we want to do something, do we really believe in the life after this world, the eternity? Exactly. And yeah, yeah. when we remember and when we say Imam al Hussein, it, uh, it is very helpful and it helps us to be always remindful yeah. that if we want the eternity, we should follow should Imam follow. al Hussein. And we're going to have a very short break, my dear uh, followers of the Ahl al Bayt. And after that, we'll be back with you very soon, inshallah. <laughs> Welcome back, dear viewers. Well, we were talking about Imam al Hussein. We are always talking about Imam al Hussein, but the difference is uh, because it's a university of Imam al Hussein, yeah. yeah. there are so many subjects for us to learn. To learn. We see that uh, it's better to exactly go and directly go to uh, the Holy Prophet and just understand what did he say about Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. We see that from the very beginning, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so careful about the future of his ummah. Because it is as like as a person who is just, uh, you know, paying attention too much to something to grow it up. And after that, he doesn't want to leave it. Yeah, you suppose that you have a very small flower in a pot. When you are not home, you ask your friend to just exactly. water the flower. Yeah, it's only a flower. But because you have made many uh, effort for that flower, okay, you do not want to leave it just uh, and let it to be dry or something like this. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did his best effort for his ummah. We do not say that he is going to leave the ummah without anything without anything so he recommended his own all the time about Ahl al-Bayt he explained about Ahl al-Bayt in different you know narrations even when the the ayah of Ahl al-Bayt was revealed to Rasulullah for many days I do not exactly remember their you know the, the history they said maybe about uh, one month or more for maybe 40 days I exactly do not remember, but for many days, every day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the house of Lady Fatima to Zahra, alayha, because inside the house was Imam Ali alayhi salam, Lady Fatima to Zahra, Imam al Hassan, and Imam al Hussein. And he said, You are my Ahl al Bayt, you are my household. He started reciting the, the ayah and then explained and, you know, exactly referred to the house and you are my uh, my own Ahlul Bayt, you are my household. 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to show to the Ummah that after me you have to follow whom? About Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, there are many different rivaya. When he was a little baby, he was a little child, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Imam, Imam uh, sorry, the, the Holy Prophet used to say, Husaynun minni wa ana min Hussein. This hadith is very famous among both Shia and Sunni. Husaynun minni wa ana min Hussein. And isn't it? Isn't that enough for someone to follow Imam Hussein? Just you know, when uh, we know that we have lots of uh, we have lots of narrations, mm -hmm. we have uh, lots of sayings, authentic narrations, that is attributed to the Prophet of Islam, saying something about Imam Al Hussein, saying something about the Commander of the Faithful. But you mentioned this. Isn't that enough for someone? to be sure that he's exactly, the one that exactly. I should follow after the Prophet of Islam. Yes, I will tell you my brother, you see, this is a narration from Rasulullah. I just want to put this hadith beside one ayah. When Nuh okay, was going to save you know, his own ummah, they unfortunately didn't accept him. They said that he is a liar or something like this. The things that they tell about the other prophets before and even after. Mm -hmm. So his son, his son didn't follow his own father, the son of Nuh. So Nuh asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is my son because he was a father of course. He said that he is my own son, unfortunately he is not taking the, you know, the boat. Uh, he was not inside the ship, yeah. He said that I do not want to follow you, I, were, I go somewhere up even maybe at the peak the of a mountain or something to be safe. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, let him to come with, with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Innahu laysa min ahlik. He is your own son, but he is not min ahlik. You know, it is very important. Rasulullah explained Husseinun minni. It means that he is following my way. It is a bit difficult to translate the Arabic words into English. Exactly. When exactly. Uh, I believe the most uh, similar thing we can say is that he was uh, not the right kind for you. He is not in the same circle mm. that you are in mm. and his true followers. Yeah, yeah. We see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes, he is your own son but he is not from you. It means he is not a good follower of you. Because of the word men in Arabic, it shows that he is a follower of me. Yeah. It means the connection between the hearts. The hearts, exactly. So yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that this son is the son of Nuh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he is not a good follower. The same word Rasulullah used for his own son, grandson. For Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Husseinun minni wa ana min Hussein. What does it mean? He said that exactly, if you want to know that everybody, everyone knew that Imam al Hussein is the grandson of Rasulullah. Of course. It was a, a need for Rasulullah to explain it, yeah? yeah, because they knew. But he wanted to say and emphasize on these, you know, fact that if you want to know Hussein alayhi salam, he is from me. He is a good follower of me. If you want to understand me, you have to refer to Hussein. If you want to understand Hussein, you have to refer to me. Hussein, non minni wa anam min Hussein. And it another, is very important. And another brother. reason, another, another thing that comes up, and we mentioned it already, is that uh, when we hear these things, I believe that people back at that time, even in this time and mm -hmm. age, well, it is something for anyone to make believe, to be sure that they should follow this person. They should follow Imam al Hussein. But the reason that they didn't choose, and still in this day and age, they don't want to choose this person as a role model to follow him, is something that you mentioned the, the worldly desires, the materials, the things that they wrongly believe they can achieve in this that, world. That is the problem, yes. The enemy side, we, we see the battle between Imam al Hussein and the enemy side. The enemy side, they, all of them thought that uh, they're going to be the leaders of the Ummah. Uh -huh. They're going to enjoy life mm. for eternity. Mm -hmm. But today, we can ask this question. 
who is alive? Imam al Hussein yeah. or yeah. Omar ibn Sa'ad? A very, a very good question. You see that somebody uh, asked me, uh, Yazid was living in a very, very great, you know, castle or maybe a palace or something. Where is it right now? He was leading a luxury life. Yeah, yeah. Even right now, nobody sees the palace of Yazid. But you see that the house of Ali alayhi salam in Najaf, it was a very, very simple house, but it's still alive. Everybody goes and see it. Millions upon millions, millions. of people every year go and, and visit that house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, I, I say that, you know, spirituality even have affection on the, you know, uh, that house on the wood or something like this. Even spirituality can have affection on this. You see, I, I visited a person who asked me a question about Islam. He was a Christian. I asked him again a question. I, I, I asked him, have you ever been to a church? He said, yes. And I also I continued asking him, have you ever been to a restaurant? He said, yes. I told him the restaurant is made of different things. For example, different the materials. cement materials that we are making a house. The same material is being used in a church. Exactly. Yeah. But do you have the same, you know, sense, the same feelings, feelings when you go to the church and when you, because that one is belong to God and you think that you are somehow connected to God. Your feeling is completely different than a restaurant. So I say that, yes, exactly spirituality can have affections, even on materials. And because of that, the house of Ali alayhi salam still is alive. But the palace of Yazid is nowhere. Who, who can see it again? And even if, you, if, if it is existed and you go inside, you have no feeling inside it. No, not only me. I visited a person who entered a mosque you see, he, he was a Christian, you know, uh, we say priest. He was a priest himself. He entered the mosque because he was just wanted, as a tourist, he wanted to visit different places and even it was an ancient mosque he entered in. I visited him there. He said that, okay, when I entered the mosque, you know, my hair became like this. He wanted to show that, you know, the affection of atmosphere caught me completely. He said, my hair became like this. Uh, why? Because the spirituality even can affect the people. He entered different places, but his hair didn't become like this. Yeah, Just, just because of the mosque. This is the affection of a spirituality. It's exactly like uh, renting a car or owning a car. Mm. We as human beings, we know yeah, that yeah, we yeah. want something for ourselves okay. for eternity. But even we know that even we cannot own a car. You know, we can have a great life to the age of 80, 90. But yeah. at the end of the day, we ha one day we have to bid fair to this world. And uh, it is a great way for us, inshallah, God willing, I hope that uh, throughout these uh, sessions throughout uh, these episodes, we can be remindful of Imam al Hussein so that we can have another look at this life. So we can detach ourselves by hearing these words, by remembering Imam al Hussein, by remembering all the events that took place on the day of Ashura, so that we can detach ourselves from all the material things, from all the things that we know uh, are not eternal. And yes. we should do yeah. the main thing and the main task, and it is to be good and to follow the good people throughout the Inshallah. history. Inshallah. Thank you very much. If you have anything to say to our dear viewers. Yes, thank you so much. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us to just know Imam al Hussein alayhi salam better and after that follow the way of Imam al Hussein. Alayhi. If we go ziyara for Imam al Hussein, if you take part in Majalis, it is because to know Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, it is going to add more, we say, ma'rifah for us, 
because of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, our dear viewers, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this episode as well. And we're going to be back with you with another session and another episode. Please do not forget us in your prayers and take care.